Hey everyone, this is Michaela, the director at the Cameron University Wesley Foundation. The Wesley Foundation is a Christian community that reaches students, grows disciples, and sends servants. And you're listening to the CU Wesley Podcast. So last week, we got into a pretty deep conversation about divine love with Julian of Norwich. This week, we will dive even deeper by journeying through the halls of the human soul with Teresa of Avila as our guide. And don't worry, if you came carrying a little bit of darkness in there, this saint has a fire burning in her heart that was stabbed into place by an angel. It is by this fire that she is able to bring light to the salvific journey through the human soul. So since this week is our first week going to a bar rather than our typical coffee shop, there are a few ground rules to help maintain good Christian fellowship. So number one, no one drinks alone and no one abstains alone. Number two, we are representatives of our church, so indulge accordingly. And number three, we are welcoming and loving Christians to all in our group and any that decide to join in. Number four, all people's stories matter even when we do not agree with them. And number five, we are learning and growing in grace, so love relentlessly. All right. That is our covenant for our time while we are at the bar. We are sufficiently introduced to each other, and I have my drink. I feel like it's time that we can start a discussion of spirituality with St. Teresa of Avila. Prayer is a really important part of living as a person of faith. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, the Apostle Paul writes that we should pray without ceasing, meaning that throughout our whole lives we should be in conversation with God. But if something like prayer is so important, why is it so difficult? By ourselves, it can feel like we're talking to the ceiling. And when we pray in groups, we can get too worried about not having the right words. And when we start to pray about ourselves and what's going on in our heart, that can be really scary. Because when we look into ourselves, we have to accept whatever brokenness we find. It is much easier to point the blame of bad things happening in the world on other people, and way more difficult to say that some of those bad things may be because of our own actions or even our inability to act. So how can we begin to look at ourselves in our spiritual lives? St. Teresa has a bit to say about this very topic. So tonight we're going to learn about her and how she struggled with her prayer life, but eventually found it to be a great strength for herself and her community. St. Teresa of Avila is now world-renowned in her expertise on the soul's spiritual journey to God through prayer. And by that, I mean she is a master of introspective faith. But Teresa didn't come about this understanding through a bunch of formal education. She found this out by trying to understand her own profound internal suffering. If you just looked at Teresa's outward actions, you would not have guessed that she experienced such internal distress. So Teresa grew up in Spain in a town called Avila which was an ancient walled city. In 1535, she felt called to a monastic life and joined a Carmelite covenant of incarnation just outside of Avila. She lived a very comfortable life while in the covenant. She was well-loved by everyone she met, and she was such a pleasant company that it became a fad in the wealthy community just to go visit her. Around 1555, She experiences a second conversion, which inspires her to a more prayerful life. When she began to pray, 
her deep sadness with the easy monastic life began to seep in along with frequent visions. She then sought counsel for these visions with the spiritual director, and they said to ignore the visions because there was no way to tell if the visions were from God or from the devil. So she tried to ignore the visions, but they kept coming again and again, and she felt called to understand their meaning. It is at this time that she began to push back from the church leadership and create her own space to reflect and meditate on these encounters with God through her visions. Teresa became very active in the church by becoming a mentor to a very short monk who we now know as St. John of the Cross. She once wrote that when she asked God to send her a monk to mentor, that God only sent her half of one. They soon became close friends and worked together to create covenant communities for the Catholic Church. Teresa eventually establishes a few covenant communities and is the only woman to establish covenants for both men and women. It is in 1562 that she writes about the mystical journey of the soul in the book that we now know as the Interior Castle. Some sources say that she finishes this great work around 1577 and does so as a form of encouragement toward spiritual life within her own covenants. She is very humble in her writings. Because Teresa lacked a lot of formal education, Teresa focuses on helping others, especially the women that were around her. Teresa describes the human soul as a physical building of a castle, which we enter through the process of contemplative prayer. And in this castle of the soul, God is the king of the castle and resides in the center. It is through prayer that a person grows to know themselves as they step deeper and deeper into the castle. And this journey inward is not always a pleasant one. Turning your prayer life inward takes practice and hard work. And Teresa points to our lives of distractions that make it difficult to focus on that prayer life. When we are able to focus our prayers, we can begin to clean up the dirty and dark cobwebs of our souls so that we can reflect more of God's loving light to those around us. Teresa describes this journey at some points as rejoice and consolation, and at others as a violent attack of engulfing darkness. It is because of this hard work, rejoicing, and violence that many people do not make the full journey to the center of the castle. Even Teresa had a difficult time with the journey. Parts of her inner struggle with prayer were so disturbing that she didn't know if the visions of prayer were from God or from a demon. During the darker portions of this spiritual journey, Teresa wisely asked for someone to accompany her and sought guidance from a spiritual director. As I've said before, the spiritual director told her to ignore these disturbing visions, but Teresa couldn't. Instead, she continued to discern the vision's meaning with the help of a learned friar. She pushes forward with the visions, journeying more and more deeper into the castle towards the loving light of God at the center. As God's loving light becomes more evident in her life, she began to share the process of turning inward in prayer with others. So now that we have heard a bit about St. Teresa's life of faith, let's reflect on how it impacts our own. This is a good time to turn to the person next to you and discuss. And if you're alone, pull out a journal and start writing. Here are some questions to help you reflect through discussion or writing. Question number one. Have you ever had a boss, teacher, or doctor advise you to do something that you did not agree with? What did you do when that happened? Question number two. How often do you pray? How do your prayers reveal God's will for you? Question number three. Do you pray with others? Why or why not? Question number four. Could you turn inward by focusing your prayer life on your own heart? If yes, what do you think you would find? And if no, what is holding you back?
Alrighty, so let's wrap up our conversations and I'll try to summarize what we talked about so we can close for the evening. So Teresa has blessed us with such deep and insightful information about our spirituality and the importance of prayer. And if you're feeling a bit ashamed about your own prayer life after hearing about others, don't worry, you still have time to tap into this means of grace. If you look back at all of the writings of Teresa and the way it changed the world around her, you'll be amazed to know that these writings and her visions took place at the end of her life. Teresa was in her late 60s when all of these things happened. Most of you here and those listening aren't anywhere near the end of our lives, so you still have time to reap the benefits of a strong prayer life. You can start strengthening your prayer life as a group by joining the Lawton Circuit Runners. It's a running and walking group, and if you join the running group, you might pass me. I'm a runner, but I'm really slow. So we meet on Saturdays at 7 a.m. at Viridian Coffee. Before we head over to Elmer Thomas Park to run or walk, we pray for each other. This group is a great way to become more active in your workouts and more active in your faith. All paces and all abilities are welcome to join. And if you don't feel like running or walking, just join us for coffee at 8 o'clock. If you want to start praying in your prayer life right now, here is one that you can pray written for you by St. Teresa herself. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things are passing away. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone suffices. Amen. We hope to see you on September 8th at 7.30 p.m., where we'll be meeting at White Buffalo Coffee Bar. Check out our social media or contact us to get more details. And if you can't make it, be sure to tune back into the podcast where we'll have a guest. So Dr. Tiffany Nagel Monroe will be bringing us closer to modern times by sharing about Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Dr. Nagel Monroe is the executive director of the Oklahoma campus at my alma mater of St. Paul's School of Theology. We'll also have her share a little bit about her work there and the importance of theological education. Well, until then, we'll see you later.